If you look at a map of the world today, almost the entire planet has been explored. However, this was not true in the 15th century. Europeans had not yet discovered America, and only had a glimpse of Asia and Africa. By the end of the 17th century, Europeans had sailed to the New World with soldiers and missionaries, like the Jesuits, to set up trade and create colonies. In a lot of ways, this is because of the Turks taking over Constantinople, what is today modern-day Istanbul in Turkey. If you look at this map, the orange is what Europeans knew about the world at the time, around the 15th century, and the yellow places are the areas that they kind of knew. The Europeans really had no idea that the Americas even existed, and conversely, the First Nations living in North and South America had no idea that the Europeans existed. Exploration would pave the way for some serious culture shock for both groups. The main kingdoms responsible for exploration were England, France, Spain, and Portugal. The country sent explorers such as John Cabot, Jacques Cartier, Ferdinand Magellan, and Bartholomew Diaz to explore. But why did they send these guys in the first place? Why weren't they happy just staying in Europe? Europe was growing its own food and was able to make its own clothing from sheep's wool. The European economy began to grow, and nobles and wealthy merchants became interested in luxury goods from Asia, such as spices and gold. Their desire to eventually explore was inspired by Marco Polo, an Italian merchant who spent 20 years in Asia in the 13th century. As gold from Europe and Africa began to decline, trade with Asia became more and more attractive. Most products headed for Europe had to go through Constantinople, an important port city between Europe and Asia. Now, trade with Constantinople was fine until in 1453 it fell to the Turks, and the Turks put harsh taxes on trade. European countries didn't want to deal with Italian or Arab middlemen or even the taxes, so the countries set off to find a new way to Asia, and this exploded the Age of Discovery. Now, sailing across the ocean was a huge challenge before the Age of Exploration, and a few things helped make it a little easier. Europeans had known since the time of the ancient Greeks that their world was round. They just didn't know how big it was. And Nicholas Copernicus discovered that the Earth revolved around the Sun. This helped navigators calculate their position on the Earth's surface. People also had a greater sense of adventure because of the invention of the printing press and the spreading of Marco Polo's book describing his time in Asia. Europeans also became better map makers and built a better ship called the Caravel. But two inventions helped shape how Europeans traveled. The compass was used to estimate a ship's position relative to magnetic north. Using a compass with an astrolab, a ship could find its position using the stars. Latitude could be calculated and longitude could be estimated, making travel between continents much easier. There were other reasons for exploration beyond economic. There were political reasons as well. Monarchs of the four main kingdoms wanted to extend their territory for more resources and a larger population to tax. Finding new lands to control outside of Europe meant that monarchs didn't need to get into war with each other for territory. Then we have the religious reasons. St. Ignatius of Loyola started the Society of Jesus, or the Jesuits, to convert pagans to Christianity. Because of the Reformation, Catholics felt the need to stop the spread of Protestantism by evangelizing and converting non-Christians. When Europeans came to the Americas, they started a very specific type of trade. We call this the triangular trade. This was trade between Europe, Africa, and the American colonies. They traded things like manufactured goods, slaves, and raw materials. Now this was the beginning of European empires. An empire was a group of colonies ruled by a single authority. Now in many cases, raw goods were sent back to the mother country from the colony so that they could be processed. The end result was that economic growth in the colony was very, very unstable. Because of the way triangular trade worked, the colony didn't make anything, but bought everything from the mother country. Fur was very popular in Europe, and the First Nations began to hunt for fur in large numbers in exchange for European goods such as weapons, tools, and other luxuries. This new lifestyle forced indigenous people to live on reserves so that they could continue to get these goods from Europeans and ended up creating a decline in their culture. The arrival of the Europeans had a profound effect on the native populations. European and the First Nations or indigenous groups 
exchanged new items with each other. This affected the way the indigenous people in America lived. So we can see that Europeans introduced barley, vines, sheep, cows, horses, metal objects, and firearms to North America, while the Europeans got pineapple, chocolate, tomatoes, beans, corn, potatoes, and tobacco from the First Nations, so we can see how these groups started to rely on one another. Now Europeans believed, because of their science, technology, religious, and political systems, that they were far superior to the natives. The Algonquin, a First Nations tribe, traded with the French because they were helped in their fight against their enemy, the Iroquois. In other cases, indigenous people traded with Europeans because they believed them to be their allies, but were later shocked to find out that the Europeans also traded with the enemies of the First Nations. The Europeans took control of the Americas by force, to the detriment of the native populations. In a little less than 60 years, the native population dropped from 80 million people to 10 million people because of disease, war, and massacres perpetrated by the Europeans. The First Nations also had no immunity to European diseases like measles, smallpox, and the flu. Many First Nations died because of this. Then if we look at Central and South America, Spanish soldiers, called conquistadors because they conquered, massacred the Inca and Aztec people while the King of Spain allowed it to happen because he was still making wealth off this colony. In some cases, the indigenous people were even forced into slavery. Now, Pope Paul III forbade enslavement of people, but the people who went and bought and sold and captured slaves completely ignored it. From the 16th to the 19th century, roughly 20 million Africans were brought to America to labor as slaves in tobacco plantations and mines. The conditions that they came in to America were terrible, packed onto slave ships in the worst conditions possible. Many died without having access to food or water. Finally, the First Nations lost aspects of their culture. The Europeans thought the way the First Nations lived and dressed were immoral, so they worked to convert the First Nations to Christianity. North American First Nations were less likely to convert than others. Missionaries sometimes offered guns to the First Nations if they would allow themselves to be baptized and eventually some aspects of the First Nations cultures began to disappear, and even some peoples, like the St. Lawrence Iroquoian, disappeared entirely. So there you have it. I hope this video was helpful to you guys in your studies, and I'll see you next time when we look at the French Revolution. Take care.